Hello and welcome to this AE Basics tutorial in which we're looking at export. Now we're going to set up for exporting this 3D flag. This is an updated plugin from Zaxworks creating their excellent 3D flags, a superb plugin. And what we're going to do is we want to export a little bit of this. As you see I've got a 10 second composition. don't want to export all 10 seconds. I'm just going to export say 2 seconds. But we'll set that up in a minute. Firstly I want to talk about what's the best way to export from After Effects. And it's worth saying that if you want to export your final version, in other words the version that's going to go up on the internet, the version that everybody's going to see, then really you don't want to export that from After Effects. You want to export that through the Media Encoder. And we will be talking about the Media Encoder in a different tutorial. If you want to export from After Effects, you want to export for a number of different reasons. And those reasons can include that you want to turn off certain effects, you want to turn off, say, motion blur, you want to export a smaller size, a lower quality version, something that is just for you to look and get an idea for how it's working in the actual project that you're using it in, the final project that you're working in. You don't want to export the final version from After Effects because if you export it from After Effects, After Effects is unusable whilst it's exporting and some of these things can be exporting for a very very long time. So if you're exporting from After Effects we'll show you why you can do that in a minute but it's not the place to export your final version. However with this particular scene that I've got here I might want to export it to use in another project or alternatively I might turn around and say this is taking a very long time to play back so what it would do is suit me to render out this composition and replace it so that it plays back very quickly because the effects are slowing down my machine significantly and that's another use where you might say I'll export it inside After Effects and the post action, the action to do after the export is finished is to re-import it and replace the use of what I've already got. Okay so let's look at exporting. Now it's going to take a few tutorials to do this because it, it's quite a complex process or it's quite an in-depth process, it's not that complicated so I'm going to split it up. Firstly choose how much you want to export. So let's say I want to export 5 seconds. If I want to get to 5 seconds I can click over here and click 5 dot, 5 point, enter. takes my current time indicator to 5 seconds and at this point I hit N to end the work area bar and that's the work area that I want to export. So I'm now ready to export. I've got all the layers turned on and turned off that I need to and I need to actually get it out. Now in previous versions you would go to composition and then there was a couple of options. One said make movie and the other one says add to render queue. The make movie option previously had the control M for make a movie keyboard shortcut. Make movie is very old and it's gone now in CS6 so we just have the add to render queue but it's got the keyboard shortcut the control M or command M on the Mac to get it to the render queue which is a queue of items that you can render out all in one go. Alternatively people are used to seeing export through the file menu and so when you go down to file export you will also see add to render queue added from the file menu. So let's click add to render queue and it opens up the render queue and our composition which was called comp1 has been added to the render queue. Now what I'm going to do is hit the tilde key to maximize the render queue. So now we're actually ready to output except what we want to think about is where is the output going. This little button over here or this hot text here shows us where it's going to go to so I'm just going to click on that button there and you can see it's going to my desktop which is the last place that I actually exported something to. Don't worry about the file format at the moment we're going to change that a bit later on but we've got a name at the moment and we're saying it's going to the desktop so I can save that I know which place it's going to but this little drop down here gives me the option to be able to change its name and this is quite important because if you're outputting lots of different compositions you don't want to have to go in and rename them all the time what you want to be able to do is just have a default setting that is applied without too much hassle or, or, or trouble in typing and all the problems and mistakes that can come from that so the option that I often choose is to use the project name and the composition name 
you can use the composition name in the output module name or the composition name you can see all the different options here and obviously if you're doing one where you're doing small versions sometimes it's quite helpful to have the dimension showing and seeing we're going to be doing a small version let's choose dimensions so we've got the comp name and the actual size this will update as we make changes a bit later on so I know where it's going to but we need to look at these settings which we're going to start to look at in the next tutorial my name's Andrew Davis and thank you for watching